hope you're having a really great holiday season. Even though things are different and, you know, I don't have any parties to go to and um, things are going to be sort of different, I still feel like I'm in the holiday spirit. And it's been fun to be around my hometown here, Topeka, Kansas, uh, during this time because as traditional events have been canceled, it's been fun to see what people have come up with as alternative events for fundraisers and so forth. And one of the best things that's happened is that people are doing these drive-through or walk-through light, light sessions, uh, light uh, events. Uh, Washburn University here has a walking tour of all of the great Christmas lighting that's going on. Our zoo has this fabulous display of Christmas lights and uh, I paid $8 for three tickets to walk through that, and it was so much fun. And then in the paper on Sunday, it listed all of the neighborhoods and the sp specific addresses of where people have lights. So I think one of the, in a couple of days, I think we're going to get in the car and drive around Topeka and see all the lights, and it's really going to be a lot of fun. So I hope you're having a good holiday season and not feeling too, too frantic. So quiet-ish kind of great holiday. Thank you for all the great support that we had last week on our bag kits. We sold a lot of bag kits, and I really appreciate that. So we put together a couple of other bag kits, one of which is this fantastic village bag. This is in a, uh, a uh, wool and polyester, or maybe this is all polyester. I honestly can't remember. I think it might be all polyester, but it has that look of the Pendleton blanket, and it makes up into a really fantastic village bag with this railroad stripe linen for the lining and ultra suede straps. And if you order one of these kits, and there's another kit that's similar to it, uh, you get a free village bag pattern with it. So don't forget to do that. We have a few of these left. but. Deb, who works here, and you, I don't think you've met her yet, made this, and I think it's one of the best-looking village bag kits that I've seen. So check that out. We're extending the sale on the Studio Carta scissors, and this week we are uh, highlighting the individual scissors, the jumbo size, the large size, and the small sizes. They come in this beautiful packaging. You can buy it as a set of three in some, uh, a great little gift package. Or you can buy them individually. And we still have our wonderful rooster scissors, which I'm crazy about. I'm the one who does all the hand sewing at night, and so I just love, gives me, just makes me chuckle to really just use these little rooster scissors. So those are still on sale for the next week as well. So it is time for us to introduce our So Confident program for 2021. We've been working on this for a while. And in light of this year and the success of Facebook Lives and the fact that I have become a little more comfortable in front of a uh, camera, I guess, in my own studio, so to speak. We decided that next year, So Confident is going to take on a whole new, updated, fresh look and be a totally different uh, format than we've really ever done before. So it's going to be project-based. Every month, I'm going to sew something, and I'm going to sew with you. I'm going to record a video pointing out all of the highlights of sewing a particular garment. In January, we're talking about the very new pattern that you don't even know about yet, the Masson top. The Masson top has top and pants, the joggers, but we'll start in January making the top. And it's going to be made in a knit, so you're going to learn all those techniques about how to sew on knits and you, sew the ready-to-wear binding and attaching a hem band and using the cover stitch machine and all of that. So I'll be taking you through the processes of making each one of these garments so that by the end of the year, the end of 2021, you will have made 12 garments if you sew along with me. So there will be a video at the first of the month. We're going to announce what the pattern is so you have time to get your pattern, pull it out of your resource library, get your pattern prepared, get your fabric or order a kit that we'll have with it. And then you'll have a couple of weeks before you will get a link from us that will tell you about 
the how to access the actual video class, the video lesson. And then a week after that, you will be able to come in on a live Zoom Q&A session with me to ask questions, show your project, um, sort out all kinds of issues, talk about whatever you want to talk about. But it will be a live session that will be recorded so that if you can't watch it at the very moment, it, you can watch it later. We're going to offer this in two ways, either as a monthly option of purchasing it by the month, or you can sign up for the entire year. So if you buy it by the month, it's going to be $45 a month. That's for the uh, online class and the Q&A session. If you sign up by the year, if you have been a So Confident member ever from Series 1 from 2012 through this year, you are going to be able to buy the plan for the whole year for $325. That's in December only. If you've never been a member of So Confident before, your price will be $375 for the year. And then in January, on January 1st, the yearly price goes to $425. With the yearly plan, you get the monthly class, you get the monthly question and answer session, plus you get some additional things. You get the quarterly magazine, which we've been doing by the month in 2020, but this time it'll be quarterly, and it's based on Betsy's fantastic concept called Make This With That, and that will be quarterly. You'll get perpetual 15% discount on fabric and patterns, so that's upped from this year's 10%. You'll have access to a private Facebook group and a only sales and giveaway sort of package. And then just last night, Betsy and I were talking about creating a separate Pinterest page for those who have the yearly subscription as well. So we'll be setting that up. And I didn't get that on my list because I did the list yesterday and we talked about it last night. But at any rate, our plan is ready to go. By next Tuesday, I'm going to show you the garments that we're going to make in January and February. I'm still sewing them, so I don't have them quite done. And we're doing the photo shoot on Friday, so I have my own deadline to get it done for Friday. But I, I know you're going to be really excited about it. Uh, we're going to, the projects are going to be based on, in such a way that you could order a kit if you choose to, but if you have things in your stash to use as well, that's fine too. So at any rate, that's our program. We're very excited about So Confident 2021. It is our 10th year for this program, which kind of blows my mind, actually. But we've had great success with it over the years, and it's just something that's just part of the heart and soul of the sewing workshop. So set that aside for a moment. I have on a little jacket that I think is just cute. This is the e-jacket, which means it's a download pattern. This is so easy to make. It's two pattern pieces. This is something you can make up super, super quickly. And if you're thinking holiday, I think you still have time to get it done. You can put it over a simple t-shirt. What I have on is the swing tee in a black jersey with long sleeves. And I've added the funnel neck, which was part of the Series 7 first quarter of So Confident, which is also a tutorial that you can still get. And I'm wearing it with my black pencil pants. So a simple couple of underlayment pieces and underlayer pieces, not underlayment, I guess, underlayer pieces, and then pop it with a fantastic piece of fabric in a simple, simple little jacket called the E-Jacket. So this is a silk charmeuse, and I'm going to talk about some silk charmeuse talk about some chiffon and georgette, and another fabric called Devoray. Devoray is a fabric that we also refer to as a burnout fabric. And a burnout fabric is made from a fabric that is more than one kind of fiber, usually a cellulose fiber and perhaps a natural fiber. And Chemicals are treated with this, the fabric is treated with chemicals that allow parts of the fabric to be burnt away or disappear. So you have sheer portions of the fabric and you have solid portions. So you see here, this is solid, solid, this happens to be painted, but the background is now chiffon. 
So that's what a Deborah is, and they are just so beautiful. I know that there's a, a big resistance to sewing on silky fabrics, sheer fabrics, silk fabrics, but trust me, <laughs> these are fabrics that become lifelong fabrics for you. I have garments in my closet that have been made out of silk 30, 40, 50 years ago that are still just as good as they ever were from the day that I made them. And other garments that I've made out of lesser fabric, so to speak, that just haven't held up over the years. The colors stay rich, silks take the dye beautifully, and the colors are just incredibly vibrant and rich. So I'm going to show you a bunch of fabrics that I think are really cool and some other projects you can, can make with them. Uh, this side of the wall has some Deveray fabrics. So here we have this beautiful chiffon, silk chiffon, with some hand painting and some burnout. But look at the flow of this and the beauty of the colors, the richness of the colors. Here's another one with a bit of a contemporary flavor to it. Also a Deveray or burnout. But it has this luminescence or iridescence that I think is beautiful in these kinds of fabrics. Those are the two blues. Here's another floral in a Deveray in the magentas and purples, a little bit of gold, my favorite green, of course, in there. And the bottom one, which is the reds, fuchsias, charcoals, a little bit of orange. I mean, is that just a beautiful array of color? There's chiffon. Chiffon is not as difficult to sew on as you might think because there's a little bit of a grip to it. And when chiffon, chiffon has a cousin called Georgette, which has a creped fiber to it. And they are even easier to sew. So don't be afraid of them. And particularly when you're thinking about making something like this jacket, which is only two pieces, very few seams, a little bit of hemming, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. You're not talking about, you know, yards and yards and yards of this. Just a simple, simple garment to just practice working on these fabrics. You do have to be kind of in the right frame of mind to sew on them. You can't just be in a hurry. Take your time listen to some great music, and enjoy the process of learning how to sew on this kind of fabric. I love making scarves, and I have, as you know, two scarf books, Sew Easy Scarves, that has 12 scarf projects in the book, plus a little uh, booklet that goes along with it, and then there are 37, 35 or 37, I can't remember, uh, scarves that have been contributed by me and other people who have worked here, plus a lot of other sewing stars that you will know out there in the world. So these are just some of the scarves that have come from the various books. This is actually polyester chiffon, and I've used the isocord thread with my serger to just use a, a little narrow three-thread serged edge on this. These are little pieces of silk charmeuse that were backed with heat and bond and then cut out the squares, fused onto the chiffon, and then some holes cut out. And because it's been bonded, then you don't get a lot of raveling. But it creates a great sort of fringed look, really easy to do, not a lot of sewing. In fact, there's no sewing. There's only overlocking and serging. And the polyester chiffon is not expensive, easily accessible. Even in the big box stores, they have things like this. Now here is a silk chiffon. And just notice, by the way, while we're at this, this is two layers of silk chiffon. And this is one layer of polyester chiffon. And you can see that the silk chiffon is drapier, and I can feel that it's much softer. And polyester chiffon doesn't really break down. Uh, it, it stays a little bit on the stiff side. I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just telling you that there's a difference between this price and this price, this feel and this feel, and not much difference in the sewing. So you might as well get the good stuff while you're at it. So another scarf, though, that's fun is two layers of chiffon. And then there's, I've sewn a grid across the bottom 
in one inch squares and in each of those squares I put in these large sequins. They have a little bit of a glitter coating to them so you get this glistening effect as the scarf moves. I love this scarf. It was fun to dig out these scarves. I haven't seen them in a while. And then this is not fabric at all, but if you're like me, you know, I've been through every hobby known to man, including knitting, which I'm now done with. But I have a lot of yarn, and I have a lot of great threads. And so this is a process of making a scarf out of your wonderful threads or pieces of yarn and using a water-soluble stabilizer to stitch through and then remove that. So it's just connected in a few parts of the scarf, but that makes a great little fringe scarf. And those projects are in the Sew Easy Scarves book. Then, here's a couple of variations of the same scarf. This one I just made over the weekend. And this is Silk Georgette. So it has this crinkled, creped uh, affair uh, to it, or feel to it. And this, so it's obviously an animal print. And then this has little cheetahs on it. So this is an animal type print, also a crinkled silk. The welts of this are another silk charmeuse, also, this is actually a Devoray. And the bottom is silk crepe. And the way that this is worn is really fun. Because it has the two openings, you can just put one end through that, quote, bound buttonhole, if you want to call it that, and wear it like this. I made another one that only has this sort of opening at one end. So it's just a little bit of a variation, but the same idea of putting the, oops, where is it? There it is. So an easy way to tie a scarf, no knot, no bow, put it through there and you're done. And it stays in place. It's really great. So we have kits available now for this scarf. And you get just the amount that you need for the body of it and the other three fabrics. You get the lightweight two-ply thread, which is what you need to sew these wonderful Devoray fabrics. And you get the beads. So you get enough fabric to make this scarf. And if you order this kit, you get a free So Easy Scarves book with it. So that's a pretty good buy. And this scarf technique happens to be a tutorial called Silk Scarf. That was clever, wasn't it? Silk Scarf tutorial. But if you want to know how to make this scarf, you can purchase the silk scarf tutorial. I have some other fabrics up here as well. This is a, another Devoray in this lovely black with the green and bronze and white in a more abstract uh, design. This is silk charmeuse. I love this paisley. Um, I, I'm crazy about paisleys anyway, but this is a beautiful, traditional, very rich looking, classic fabric. This one is interesting because this has a natural border at both sides, on both ends. So this could be a scarf, and this could just be your border, either attached or detached and reapplied or separated with something else. But I think this would be a magnificent neutral sort of scarf if you're not interested in so much color. And then this is a polyester Devoray, so it doesn't have to be silk, it can be polyester. If you're making a long skinny scarf, sometimes the widths of fabrics don't work. You know, I like to have a scarf that's 60 inches to 72 inches if I'm wearing something that's going to be a long narrow scarf. And some of these fabrics are 60 inches, but a lot of them are narrower than that which is why this concept of a scarf really works because you can break up uh, the uh, 
width of it and add extensions to make it whatever length that you want the scarf to be. All of these are 50 some inches. Again, that probably wouldn't be quite enough width for um, a long scarf. Uh, so you might want to piece it or add some other fabrics to it. I also brought out some lace fabrics that I think is another way to add to your holiday um, repertoire. So I told you I have on the swing tee in black jersey with the funnel neck. But we have a lot of variations of how to use the swing tee pattern. And this is the swing tee in a lace. And this time, the back is longer than the front. The sleeves are long obviously. And there's no banding or cowl to this. And one of the materials that I have come to love, that I had many of when I was a kid, are these packages of bias binding. Single, this is the extra wide double fold. That makes a fantastic binding for these kinds of fabrics where you don't want to fiddle and fuss with bias strips of lace or silk or devoray or whatever, but you want to finish the necklines nicely on something, use that and it works out just great. Now this one is interesting. So that's the swing tee. Most people can't guess what this one is. So we have a top called the Hudson Top that normally has long sleeves and a big cowl neck to it, soft fold of fabric. Well, if you delete the sleeves, delete the cowl, and just cut the front and the back, sew the shoulder seams, use the bias binding for the neckline, hem the bottom edges and the side edges, and then just do a little tack under the arm this makes a wonderful little shrug, a little throw, a sort of uh, poncho sort of thing. Make this in black or red for the holiday season. Wear this over your black t-shirt and pencil pants for the holidays. Or we have it, we have obviously in black and wear it over red. This is a red polyester crepe fabric that I think this whole ensemble really looks fantastic. Put your black pencil pants with it and you are dressed up and then put on your finest jewelry if you have any uh, that, you know, get it out. It's, time, it's the season to get out your best jewelry or the necklace that uh, your husband bought you last year that you weren't crazy about, but uh, you know, you, he'd like to see it. So Hudson top, swing tee, and the lace in the black and the red. So let's talk technique a little bit with some of these fabrics. One of the nice things about most of these fabrics is that they tear. I love tearing silk. I love the sound of it. I love the feel of it. So there's no reason not to get perfect straight of grain by tearing the fabric. Now notice this is a little bit ruffled. Well, I can settle that back down with a little bit of steaming. I don't really press it, but just get the steam on it, and that wavy edge will settle down and become straight again. You can pull a thread and cut straight of grain, but whenever you're making a garment out of any sort of really silky fabric, it's really important that you cut every piece, single layer, with straight of grain, perfect. You're going to spend more time cutting out these kinds of garments, for instance, on this e-jacket or a scarf, than you are, are even sewing it up. But if, it, if you don't cut it on the straight of grain, you're going to get a wavy hem, and things are going to feel a little bit off. Cut single layer. Now, you're going to dial that needle size down. I use a universal needle. You can use whatever needle works on your fabric. You know, I use universal needles and I talk about that all the time. 
and people are always asking me if I use metallic needles or sharps or jerseys or ballpoints. And the answer is I own them. I have them. But I always put a universal needle in my sewing machine. And if I have problems such as skip stitches or I don't know what, slanted stitches or something just is not right, then I'm going to change and use something where I get the combination that finally works. I've been known to change threads, needles, brands of needles, brands of threads, types, weights, all of that, until I get the look that I want. But for the most part, I'm going to use a 65 or a 70 millimeter universal needle. And then I've talked about this lighter weight thread. The two-ply cotton thread is what I use on these lightweight fabrics. And if you order the scarf kit, that's the kind of thread you're going to get. Um, you could use silk thread, but I think it's fairly unnecessary. It's beautiful if the stitch is going to show, but there's no real reason to use silk thread on silk fabric unless you just like the looks. Cotton thread is fine. Polyester thread is not what you want to use. It's like a little wire that sits on top of the fabric, and you can see the th stitches, you can see the line of thread, and you can feel it, and it, it makes it a little bit stiff. Cotton is drapier. And this two-ply is a 60 weight rather than the traditional 50 weight that we use. And not everybody has it, but most quilt stores do, a lot of sewing machine dealerships do, but not the big box stores necessarily. I always have my 5.5 millimeter throat plate on my sewing machine. That's just standard for me. The only time I change to the 9 millimeter throat plate is if I'm doing any sort of real multi-motion stitching, which I don't do very often. So that's my standard throat plate. But I also own a single hole throat plate in case some of these filmy fabrics tend to get stuck down into your throat plate, then you want to change. Both of those are extra accessories. If I were buying a new sewing machine today, I would make them change that out for me, and they probably would, or I'd make them give it to me depending on the price of the machine. Dealers hate it when I say that. I use my extra tissue paper from the pattern as pattern underlayment. Sometimes when I'm starting on an edge of a really filmy fabric like this, it wants to get bunched up. So if I just put a little dab of paper under the beginning of that and start sewing, it just starts off great and I don't have any hitches from then on. I found that when I was making this scarf, that I wanted, I use Fusy Web. Now I've talked about Fusy Web a lot. That's our little line of glue that's real sheer. I could have made a white sheer scarf and used this Fusy Web on it, and you wouldn't see this through it. It's so sheer. That's the beauty of this particular product. But I did find that holding some of these seams together. I cut that fusy web in half, so it was just a tiny little narrow strip, and I fused things together to hold them. It really helps, in addition to a walking foot, to use the fusy web and fewer pins. Now, if I'm using pins, I am using on this fabric the quilting pins by Clover, which I really, really like. They're very flexible, they're very fine, and they it doesn't seem like you're putting a dagger through your uh, fabric. So check out these pins if you don't already have them. And then when I was pressing the tube of this, you know, everything is in a tube, two layers, I found that it was very useful to use a seam stick. And this is like a half of a dowel, which of course if you have a handy partner, that person can make them for you out of a closet dowel rod, but I don't happen to have that sort of handy partner. I have a partner, but not a handy one. Oh, he's handy, but you know what I mean. He doesn't do woodworking. So we sell these. <laughs> and they're actually made here in Topeka by um, a friend of ours. So it's got a little notch in the back where I can hang it in my sewing room if I want to do that. But you want to press your seams open first on your edges before you turn something, because it's difficult to get these seams press so that the well of the seam is absolutely at the very edge. And pressing seams open first over a seam stick really help bring those wells of seams out um, where they should be. All right. So a lot of scarves, plus the jacket that I have on, have very, very small hems. 
you generally don't want to put a wide hem in a silk garment. And you want to do something that's either an eighth of an inch wide finished or maybe a half an inch wide at the most. This particular e-jacket has a finished hem of a half an inch. But a lot of times on certain scarves, scarves, I want to make a hem that's an eighth of an inch. So if you, I've got this blown up a little bit uh, so that this looks like it's real wide. But just know that I'm working very small. But you start out by stay stitching along the edge. And you want to be some distance in from the edge. So you want to allow an extra half an inch or so when you're cutting out. Or in the case of this particular hem on the e-jacket, you want to stay stitch on the finished hem line. So if it has a three-quarter inch hem, you're stay stitching a three-quarter of an inch from the edge. And then that is the line that becomes your barrier or fence or guide to press the fabric to the wrong side along that line. And sometimes I'll use a piece of tag board and put it right on this edge so that I can press that edge up and over the tag board. Or sometimes I'm able to just give that a little bit of tension and just press it along that stitching line. If I'm wanting to do the finished 3 8 inch, starting out at 3 quarters. No, I'm, I'm mixed up here. Let me start over. If you're having a 3 quarter inch hem finished, or three, <laughs> if you have a three quarter inch hem allowance, that turns into a three eighths inch finished hem. There we go. So this would be sewn at three eighths of an inch. Sorry about that. Pressed at three eighths of an inch. And when turned again, it's taken up three quarters of an inch. Whew. I'm not good at math, I tell you. If I don't write things down, it is something terrible. But if I'm wanting this to be really, really tiny, let's say an eighth of an inch, then I'm going to trim this. I'm going to use those new little red trimming scissors or my rooster scissors to trim that so that it's an eighth of an inch. Get rid of that excess fabric. And then I can fold it one more time, no matter what the width is. This is not a fold that I press again. I fold this as I sew it. So I have the first fold pressed, second fold is folded as I sew. And because of the stay stitching, that has stabilized the edge. It's not going to um, wave and, and stretch out. And it just, it, it, it forms this stability that it just turns on its own. It's super easy to do. You can use a regular presser foot. You can use an edge stitch foot with a guide, whatever works for you, uh, a walking foot, whatever you need. So that is a baby hem or a small handkerchief hem. Okay. One of the other things that we have on special, and I've made reference to, we had great success in selling the Isacord uh, gift box sets of neutral colors. And they were so successful with the black, gray, neutral, and white that we decided to put together two other kits. One kit that is jewel tones. So you would have three spools of red, three spools of teal, three spools of purple, and three spools of royal blue in a gift box. It, it's in the same kind of box as the scissors. And then another grouping of earth tones. We have the tarnished gold, a nutmeg or copper, grasshopper or lima bean or some sort of green, and chocolate brown. So we have three sets now, a neutral set, a jewel tone set, and an earth tone set. All ready to go for gifting or for yourself. All right. Um, I think that is it for the moment. Do we have any questions? Oh. <laughs> yes, Samantha commented on my necklace. Uh, thanks to Samantha, I own this necklace. Uh, there's a particular uh, line of jewelry that is sold at a, a very incredible store in Charleston, South Carolina called Gwen's. And some, whenever Samantha shows up in Topeka, she always has 
this chain with various things that she hangs on it. Well, I have all kinds of things I can hang on things, so I ordered the chain, and so I just put on some baubles that um, I already owned, and um, every time you'll see me now with this chain every week with different things on it, I suppose. But thank you, Samantha. <laughs> Do you want to go over some of the so confident things again? Sure. Okay. And I, verify that it is on the website. You can sign up for it now. Yes, this uh, so confident 2021 is on the website, uh, both as a monthly purchase or a yearly plan. So you can sign up by the month. We can, uh, if you sign up for January, we will email you January, it won't be the first, it'll be like the third, whatever the first working day is after that, uh, the project, some tips and tricks about how to fit the uh, garment and how to, uh, if there's anything about cutting out or preparing your fabric or getting ready to sew or ordering your kit or ordering your pattern if you need it. Uh, so, monthly plan is $45 a month. Two weeks later, you will be sent the link to be able to watch the video lesson at your leisure. And then you can follow along. You can just watch the whole thing on your own. And that's what I do with some of these online classes. I'll watch it once, and then I might run it again as I'm sewing or something, or painting or whatever I'm doing. But you'll be able to watch this video lesson at your leisure, and then a week after this link is sent out, we send out another link to a Zoom question and answer session that's live with me, and you'll be able to ask, ask questions about any of your concerns from fitting to sewing to wardrobing to fabric types or whatever. The whole year is gonna be based on projects, but every I'm gonna be working you through a lot of different kinds of fabrics. We're not gonna sew on the same kind of fabric all year. I'm gonna really mix it up so that by the end of the year you will have gained some knowledge, a lot of knowledge about a lot of different kinds of fabrics and how to tackle them, how to tame them is a pretty good word. So that's a monthly plan, these two things. If you sign up for the yearly plan, if you sign up in, in December and you have been a member of So Confident of any year for the last nine years, then your price is $375 and you get the video class, the question and answer session, plus a make it with that, make it, make this with that magazine. If you've been a member of 2020, you know how beautiful those magazines are. They are incredible. Lots of beautiful photographs, uh, tips, uh, taking you through the processes of making certain things. Uh, but just idea book, look book. 15% discount on fabric and patterns all year long. Access to a private Facebook page also access to a private Pinterest page, and a members only sales and giveaways. We're gonna be, during this q and I'm gonna be doing some uh, giveaways this year that we've never done before. So your yearly plan gets all of this. Monthly plan is here. If you sign up for the yearly pl plan and you've never been a member of So Confident, your price is 375. If you sign up for the yearly plan after January 1st, then the price is 425. How do we get the pattern if we are monthly or will they be digital? It'll be a mix of patterns. Uh, the first pattern is digital. One of the things I haven't announced or talked about uh, here in Facebook Live is that our printing facility for our patterns has been open and shut and open and shut for the last eight months. And currently it's closed. And so we don't have any ability to print patterns at the moment. So January and February will be digital. So if you sign up for the monthly plan, you'll get the pattern digitally. But throughout the course of the year, and by the way, that if and when the printing plant is open, we will have that available in print. But we don't anticipate that that will happen for January. They're just not open yet. So, but through the course of the year, I'll be going back and forth on digital versus print or patterns that have options of either one. And you'll have the chance when we announce the uh, project for, at the first of the month of ordering the pattern if you don't already have it, either digitally or print if it's available in print or 
if it's available digitally. But it'll be back and forth in both. I'll be using new patterns, older patterns, a mix. I'm going to I'm going to try to get it to where we'll have like a nice wardrobe of things throughout the year, a real mix of fabrics and real mix of looks, uh, which is kind of what we're known for, you know, create a, an entire ensemble. Are the patterns included in the either the monthly plan or the yearly plan? No, the patterns are not included in the monthly plan or the yearly plan. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. How would the e jacket do with the wool knit, which is drapey, um, similar to a ponte knit? Oh, the e jacket would be great in a wool knit and a ponte knit. Uh, we made this in a furry uh, sweater knit that was kind of bulky. This makes up in a lot of nice things, so I think it'd be great in a ponte knit. Yeah. Okay, and what size is the e jacket that you're wearing? I'm wearing a medium. I could probably wear a small, but I have a medium on. Okay, um, the scarf um, that has the cutouts, did you use a heat knife to cut out the holes? No, I um, use scissors to cut out the holes. I don't own a heat knife, but no, I just use scissors, trimming scissors, rooster scissors. Okay, um, the buttonhole scarf, is the, the pattern for that, like if you buy the kit, is the pattern in the book that comes with the kit? Yes, if you order this kit, you get this book and the pattern is in this book. The pattern, coincidentally, is also in this book. So if you order, if you own this book, or if you want to order this book, it's in here as well. But it is, the pattern is included with the kit, and this book is free with the kit. So easy scarves. Okay, the red lace, um, does it have any stretch? The red lace does have some stretch, a little, but not, it's not what I call a knit. Um, it does have stretch though. So yes, both ways, four-way stretch. And then the Hudson, um, what size is that? And is that stretchy? Is that a knit as well? Um, this knit, this is a different knit which we don't have. We have this black knit and there is some stretch here as well. And this is a size small. This is a super oversized garment so you don't need to really be too concerned about the size on this. You can make this any length and frankly any width. It comes from in the package extra small to XXL but this happens to be a small. Okay, when you're sewing um, a hem, would you use the paper underlayment to begin sewing the hem? Um, to sew this hem, would I use the paper underlayment? I probably wouldn't need it because a hem is generally in the round, and so you're starting on fabric and your presser foot is on fabric. It's when your presser foot is off the fabric that you have trouble, so not necessarily, but if I'm making this garment and hemming this, this is a situation where I would use underlayment because I'm starting a hem off of the fabric. So the answer is it depends on the situation. Is the website set up so that So Confident 2021 could be given as a gift? Um, and I guess that would be for me. <laughs> um, I mean, we could, um, I think it would have to be maybe a gift card. Like someone could purchase a gift card and then they use that to purchase So Confident for themselves. Yes, purchase a gift card for the amount that you are interested in. Can, and they could make a note in the purchase. Um, I think they will do a gift So that you would know how to put it in their account. Well, I think if they're, um, they would then have, they would have a gift card, so then they would therefore use it to purchase. Got it. The yeah, so I think the, the, a direct purchase of So Confident as a gift is probably not the way to go. You purchase the gift card, 
for the amount that you're interested in, and then that person or you uses that gift card to, to purchase So Confident. I think that's a good way to handle it. Okay. okay. Oh, and then um, So Confident, let's mention that um, the So Confident members will be receiving their information about their discount that you listed for 325. Oh, you, those of you who are members, have been members of So Confident, will be getting a, an email uh, about the details of your special for the month of December. Yeah. By the way, in another hour or so, 1 o'clock Central Time, I am doing uh, a Facebook Live for the 2020 So Confident members, so I hope you'll come back. And I have lots of um, ideas to show you of how to uh, make the Crossroads shirt, jacket, coat in a fun way. Uh, what about a rolled hem for silky fabrics? The baby hem that I described to me is a, an alternative to a rolled hem. Uh, it's small, it's narrow, and it's rolled. Now, a true rolled hem, I think, is really fussy. I own all of the presser feet with my Bernina that will roll a hem, but I find those really fussy to work with, particularly on long, long, long scarf lengths. Now, Cynthia Guffey, I remember those of you who ever took a class with Cynthia Guffey know that she had this fabulous technique for a hand rolled hem. And I have used that and used that and used that. And I, maybe there's someone out there like Marlene who would know wh if that information is still accessible of how to do that rolled hem, because it was very unique. Uh, we might see if we can track that down. But otherwise, a rolled hem, a true rolled hem is, can be done on a sewing machine with a special presser foot. I prefer to use this technique as a baby hem. And you get a similar look, same look, a lot easier to do. Um, what is the stitch length for sewing the chiffon hem? Stitch lengths for sewing chiffons and devourets and those uh, kinds of fabrics are about a 2.3 millimeter to 2.4 millimeter. Little bit shorter, not a lot shorter than, than standard. Uh, a few more questions about Sew Confident. What is the size range of the Sew Confident patterns? Sew Confident patterns range from extra small to XXL. Our XXL uh, goes up to 20, is it 22 or 24? <laughs> I should know that. 22? 22. And the extra small goes down to a 6. Do you have any idea of the price point for the kits for So Confident? I don't have any idea right this minute about price points for kits. They will all vary. The one for January, which is the top, I don't have the yardage in my mind, but it's going to take about a yard and a half of knit. Um, our knits tend to run in the low 20s per yard. So a kit will include a th some thread. I mean, we're going to be in the 30s or 40s, but I'm, everyone's going to be totally different every month. And of course, I can't say for sure, <laughs> but that's kind of the range. Be based on the fabric price and other notions that we decide to include with them. If it needs buttons, it needs buttons. If it needs um, top, uh, other threads, alternative threads, or if we decide that you have to have some notion with it, so it will depend. Do the video lessons last as something the subscriber owns, or is it a part of a subscription? You will own the video. Once you download it, you'll have it forever. Which is like our other so Which is confident. like all of our other So Confident mm -hmm. tutorials. They're yours. It's not a subscription base. It's, it's a, so if you don't get around to watching it for three years, it's still yours. The idea, though, I have to say, I wanted this to be a motivating venture this year. I've heard it from so many people who have not been able to get out all that much, uh, they're home a lot, and they want to sew, but they're still stuck. And I want this to be the motivator. You know what the project is. 
you have a timeline for when you can watch the video, and you have a timeline for being able to ask questions. I'm hoping that in that three-week period of time, that gives you time to at least begin, sort out, and think about uh, getting things sewn so that by the end of the year, you've sewn 12 things, which not everyone can say. I mean, some people that we know own sew 12 things a month. And then there are people who want to sew and, and just can't for whatever reason. So the reason I wanted to do this particular format this year is to try to get you at your sewing machine so that you can ask me legitimate questions of what problems you had while you were sewing. Will the fitting guide be included? Uh, will the fitting guide be included? Um, I, I don't know what that means exactly. There, when, when we sent out the first email regarding the project, I am going to give you some notes about this pattern runs large or this pattern is standard or you might think about shortening it or the shoulders run wide or, you know, I might give you some tips as to what you can think about in your fitting but there's not a true fitting guide that we have produced that, that is universal. We have a fitting book that you people who are members of 2020 will be getting. We are so close. You will get it. Uh, and then that book will be for sale in 2021 to people who were not members of 2020. And maybe that's what you mean, the fitting book. That would be an extra purchase. And I probably, knowing me, will refer to that book in those notes. So it might be one, something you might want to think about getting. Uh, when, <clears throat> when do you announce the patterns that are included in So Confident? At the first of the month, the, January 3rd, February 1st, March 1st. At the beginning of every month is when I tell you what the pattern is for the month. Are you planning to continue with Facebook Lives? Yes, I'm planning to continue with Facebook Live. <laughs> Until I just can't stand it anymore. <laughs> or nobody's watching. Whichever comes first, I suppose. Okay. Will So Confident 9 patterns and tutorials be available individually? Here's what we're doing about 2020, in 2021 so far. Uh, as you may know, we had four patterns, the detour jacket, the no tee, the chesney pants, and the crossroads shirt. Those were the four patterns for 2020. Betsy has put together what we're calling compendiums that will combine all of the technical information, some beauty, but mostly the technical information for all three of the techniques for, let's say, the detour jacket. So you will be able to purchase those compendiums uh, individually. If you like just the jacket for 2020, you can buy, that will include the pattern uh, and that magazine. It's still a bargain, though, to buy the whole year of 2020, because those compendiums, if you bought all four of them, will be more money than what 2020 will have been as a package. But you can buy them individually uh, soon. We'll announce that in 2021. We, Betsy has most of it done. It, it, she has the, definitely the first couple done, so we're close. Okay. Um, what is the silk content versus viscous in the kitted scarf fabrics? Um, Well, that's a good question. I know, I thought this was silk. I might have to look these up. This is silk crepe. I thought this was silk crinkle and this was silk. I don't know, I thought they were all silk, but maybe one of them is viscose. I'm not sure which one. I'm gonna have to, um, you know, they're, they're right behind you, Erin, I think, or at least see if one of them has viscose in it. Um, this just says viscous and silk. Uh, okay, so this, this particular, the cheetah one is viscose and silk. Do we have a proportion of, or a percentage of that, or is it just viscose no, and silk? No, it doesn't say. No, we don't know what it is. Um, the silk crepe, that one's just... This is silk, silk, silk crepe. Um, this one, um, yeah, 55 silk, 45 rayon. 
55 silk, 45 rayon, the welts. And this one is? This one also just says viscous and silk. Yeah, so these are viscous and silk. I didn't realize that. Well, they feel like silk, but the mm -hmm. viscous, uh, that helps keep the price down, which is probably why they're doing it these days, because silk is pretty expensive. Uh, what is a tutorial for your funnel neck? That is, the tutorial for my funnel neck is, where's my sheet of specials? There we go. Is that in, is that, in that is, same one? I don't know. That might be something uh, Betsy could figure out. Betsy might put have to post that. Uh, one of the specials that we have this week is, the Series 7 first quarter tutorial, which is how to do this. This funnel neck might be in that series first quarter, or it might not. We'll, we'll make sure you get information about that. I'm not sure. Series, series 7, the swing tee was part of Series 7. And various quarters, we made changes and variations, everything from V-neck to funnel neck to long sleeves to cap sleeves to this. So we'll have to look. OK. I think I hope everyone has uh, maybe found some of the So Confident information online. We had some questions about that. But Betsy did link in the comments. And it's also in the under Linda's videos in this week's category is uh, the So Confident information. All right. You're um, mic'd, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We put a lot of effort into our So Confident program. Uh, it's where we try to be the most inspirational. Um, Kathy Davis, who, as you know, worked here and still works for us basically off-site now, uh, is real instrumental into coming up with the variations, uh, beautiful fabrications of things. Uh, January and February, uh, we're taking advantage of introducing the new pattern for the projects January and February. And I consider them to be... Um, easy projects, but real wearable at-home garments, which is why I wanted to put them in first. But as we go through the year, there will be some more complicated, some really funky, fun, interesting. It's going to be a wide variety of things. And I know that there has been quite a few questions about So Confident, and I think Betsy has answered those, or Linda has answered those, and um, there is more details on the website, and we'll be sending out information um, about it right. in the next couple of weeks, talking about it. Um, so I hope everybody's answers right. or questions get answered. Yeah, this is the first day that we've even verbally talked about it. And next Tuesday, I will be showing the two garments for January, February, and of course have additional information. But it is on our website. You're going to be getting some emails. You'll believe me. You'll hear from us. It's it's an important program to us. Okay. Thank All you. right. Well, I hope to see uh, a lot of you in an hour for the uh, Facebook Live So Confident 2020 group. All right. See you next week.